One thing I find myself doing a few times a year is appearing in a show. I sometimes get asked to compare events like swing dance festivals or cabaret nights. One thing that these shows have in common is that they tend to get thrown together very quickly at the last minute, with very little rehearsal time. Now, while it is true that I have been in some pretty rotten shows, I can, I think, with hand on heart, say that I've been in some great shows too. And one thing that connects many of these great shows is that they were put together very quickly by talented people. If you are capable of putting together a good team, both performers and technicians working the sound and lights, then you've actually done the bulk of the work. There are worse jobs. Unhindered by over-rehearsal or talent, Sasu, get out of here! Come on! Okay, now, do you know what you, you, know what you have to do? You, you have to replace Baivi in the, in, the, in the two numbers she was doing. You've seen them, right? Yeah, the two numbers. Yeah. You can do it, yes? Yeah. He's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen! Yes! Okay, Sasu, I want you to go out into that dressing room and come back a star! You see, talented people don't like to look foolish and incompetent, so they will go to some effort to make sure that they don't. And if they are talented, then they'll probably manage it. In my experience, people love to see talented people confidently coping when things go a bit wrong. They like to experience live theatre, and one of the things that makes this experience good is the uniqueness of it, the you-had-to-be-there feeling that comes with seeing something happening in the moment. These jazz musicians have not worked with this tap dancer before, and there was no rehearsal. But watch how they take the cue from him to speed up. I recall one show I was doing some silly act in, in which a pianist got really nervous and started to make more and more mistakes. Admittedly, she did end up in tears afterwards, but she soldiered on to the end of the piece, and by the end, the crowd loved her. Boys and girls, are you sitting comfortably? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, apart from one exception, are you sitting comfortably? Yes. Then I'll begin. When things do go wrong, it doesn't take much to get a laugh. A simple acknowledgement of the mistake in a jolly manner will do it. I am your host. <laughs> yes, sometimes they even get me to sing. Though they can't get me to sing well. This music was not meant to be played. That was interesting. <laughs> One bizarre train wreck of a show I was in was a cabaret, which I was supposed to be hosting in the character of an evil hypnotist. But I had to drop that and ended up instead spending most of my time trying to cope with the fact that the producer of the show, who was also in it, was very drunk and was messing everything up. Even when I'd finally got the right piece of music playing for one of the acts, she then stopped it. Afterwards, to my astonishment, I was told by a few people who saw it that it was a brilliant show. I suppose it was certainly memorable. I might be accused of making introductions that are possibly a tiny bit silly. Some say that she is the great granddaughter of the Matahari herself. Woo! Others say that she is like some beast of legend with the body of a woman and the head of a woman. But <laughs> not the same woman. <laughs> One thing I have seen spoil cabarets is people who have a skill. And because they have that skill, which is one that they associate with performing, they wrongly think that they have an act. There is a huge difference between these two things. A good example is poi. You know, those things that people who don't suit dreadlocks twirl about. Well, you can be very good at twirling poi, 
but standing there and twirling them for five minutes is not an act. It has no gimmick, no build-up, no narrative, no humour, no character, no involvement with the audience, and it gets dull very quickly. I'd say the same about people who can play a musical instrument. Unless you are jaw-droppingly amazing, you don't have an act if you're just playing a piece of music on the violin. You're late! You're, you've missed it! They've, they've done it! They've done it! Just, come on! Somebody help him on with his corset! Look at this act. These guys can do acrobats. But the act isn't just watching them balance in various different ways. The act is two men trying to impress two women. It has characters and narrative build up and it holds the attention. And here's another example. Being able to do a handstand isn't an act. But getting a shy member of the audience to come out and then pour champagne into a glass that you hold between your toes whilst doing a handstand and then getting him to hand that glass nervously to a glamorous showgirl, that's an act. Another thing to remember is keep it short. If you are a producer and you are unsure of how good an act will be, insist that it is no longer than, say, three minutes. Leaving them wanting more is so much better than leaving them wanting less. If it turns out to be great, you could perhaps bung in an encore later. Schools get children to put on shows. I think that this is actually a very good idea. There is no experience quite like it. A large team of people all have to do their very different jobs all at the same time, and it all has to come together on time in front of many witnesses, as rehearsed, as well as coping with the inevitable little upsets and you get to see how important everyone is. If the star of the show looks bad because the lowly spotlight operator mucks up, you learn how important spotlight operators are. It is creative, but requiring discipline, involves preparation as well as improvisation. I think it's a much better rehearsal for employed life than playing team sports. Ladies and gentlemen, were it not for this grand impresario in our midst, ladies and gentlemen, Laura 